We have a Belgian midfielder, RFC Liège, and USL Dunkirk to thank for the world of modern football. This is due to the 1995 rule that demanded Jean-Marc Bosman and others could move freely upon the expiration of their contract. This was a story of one man who simply wanted to move football clubs. Instead, he ruined his own career, life and potentially the world of football. This is a story of football if the Bosman rule never happened. No sooner had Ajax won the Champions League than the Bosman ruling transpired and no sooner had the Bosman ruling transpired than half the Ajax team went hee hee, let's go to Milan and off they went. Over the course of 12 months, Edgar Davids, Michael Reisiger and Patrick Kluivert all departed for Milan. Winston Bogard did too but he's not as integral so fuck him like. With half the team stripped out, it's also useful to mention Clarence Sadoff's sale to Sampdoria, as well as the exits of Nwankwo Kanu to Inter, Fenidi George to Betis and Mark Overmars to Arsenal. Counting the retirement of Frank Rijkaard and other sales, Ajax had just Edwin van der Sar, the De Boer twins, Yari Lippmann and Danny Blind and reserve goalie Fred Grimm left by the summer of 1997 who had been named in the 16-man squad for the 1995 Champions League final. Grim indeed. Assuming that the initial free transfers don't happen, it's safe to say that several high-profile exits to Serie A, La Liga and the Premier League are warded off as Ajax continue to compete at a high level. Of course, it wouldn't be simple as saying Ajax are amazing, they'll just win three in a row like they did in the 70s, but they would certainly be more competitive. It'll only be when Louis van Gaal was headhunted by Barcelona when their competitive streak would tail off, as the Dutchman would wholesale bring a barge of Ajax players with him from Amsterdam to the Camp Nou. By which point English football would be completely different as we hurtle towards the 21st century. The Premier League was just about getting to grips with foreign imports by the Bosman ruling as several players bled into the league following the World Cup in America the prior year. That hadn't quite graduated though into the management of clubs. The first non-British and Irish manager in the Premier League was Ozzy Ardiles who took charge of Spurs in June 1993. This though is an outlier, as the former Spurs player was simply walking a well-trodden path of former player turns manager of the same club. Outside of this legacy appointment, the first real waves of continental management into the Premier League comes off the back of Euro 96, when Ruud Hullet is hired at Chelsea and Arsene Wenger arrives at Arsenal. The former in this universe, however, does not happen. Rude Hullet was signed on a free from Sampdoria, which is not allowed, and therefore doesn't happen. Hullet doesn't bring sexy football to Chelsea, and once Glenn Hoddle is snapped up by England, in steps former player George Graham to take his place. In the interim, Chelsea have become a dour team to watch, but ultimately a successful one on home soil. They strangle their way to the FA Cup win of 1997 and League Cup of 98, but are found wanting on European soil. They aren't led by the totemic talents of Gianfranco Zola and Gus Poye, but by Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, who almost single-handedly drags the club into the new millennium. They don't appear in the Champions League in this time frame and crucially sit by and watch as Tottenham Hotspur is purchased by Roman Abramovich in 2003. And at the heart of what would become Jose Mourinho's title winning team is the defensive combination of Ricardo Cavallo and Sol Campbell. The latter wasn't allowed to leave for Arsenal in 2001 and although there was interest on the continent, the appetite wasn't there on Spurs end to sell the centre-half. Campbell's patience is rewarded, however, with the league titles of 2005 and 2006 before he closes out his storied career in England with a third crown in 2010. However, he never wins the Champions League, which had become Abramovich's holy grail, and it is finally won when Spurs get over the line dramatically against Bayern Munich in 2012 
at the Allianz Arena. The European game, although a more level playing field, has its usual potholes of underperforming teams. Juventus, for example, aren't able to cash in on their savvy strategy of finding the best free transfers available. Therefore, Andrea Perlo remains in Milan and Paul Pogba remains in Manchester. Juve are, of course, still successful on home soil, largely holding back the challenge of Milan as Napoli, Roma and sporadically Inter and Lazio lurk in the background. However, they're nowhere to be found on the European stage, often being fodder for the Spanish or English teams of better tactics or bigger checkbooks in the last 16 or quarter-finals of the Champions League. Bayern Munich too can be found circling that particular drain as they are unable to kick on following the retirement of Jupp Heynckes in 2013. He is not replaced by Pep Guardiola and whilst they do continue to jostle with Jurgen Klopp's Borussia Dortmund for the Bundesliga, they are more often than not on the receiving end of a silver medal. Robert Lewandowski does not cross the divide as BVB do not let him go and this emboldens the black and yellow not to be suffocated into the sale of Mats Hummels and other German clubs follow suit in this respect. It's only when the luster of Klopp leaves the West Vallen Stadion, ultimately for Tottenham at the start of the 2015-16 season, that Bayern finally gain a stronger grip on the Bundesliga title. And by this point, English football is finding its dominance in Manchester. The new Emirati money props up Manchester City as Manuel Pellegrini wins two of the last three league titles, whilst Pep Guardiola tries his best to swim against the Glazer Tide across the city at United to be successful. Whilst they do claim the title in 2016 ahead of Klopp's Tottenham, it is only a matter of time before it is there, as well as Carlo Ancelotti's Liverpool, are the ones taking up the premier berths in the league. But where's Leicester though? Well, they're gripping on to their parachutes for dear life as they fall off the cliff edge of the Premier League and back into the Championship after one solitary season with their hands by the comforts of the fire. Now they're left in the wilderness like so many teams who peep their heads above the parapet. No Esteban Cambiasso and no Mark Albrighton on free transfers in the summer of 2014 means a desperate season of strife marooned rock bottom of the table in what would be their only Premier League season in what is getting on for a generation. Ultimately, this is a world with lesser wages for players, less intrusion from agents and a more diverse playing field on the continent. Even if the game moves slowly towards a homogeny of Western European forces ruling the game.